Jesus, a sin, I've seen sin hardened men melted, derelicts transformed, and the light of hope put back into the eyes of the hopeless. At the name of Jesus, hatred and bitterness turn to love and forgiveness and arguments cease. I've heard a mother softly breathe this name at the bedside the child delirious from fever. And watch that little body grow quiet and the fevered brow cool. I sat beside a dying saint, their body racked with pain. When those final fleeting seconds summon their last ounce of ebbing strength to whisper her sweetest name, Jesus. Emperors have tried to destroy it. Philosophers have tried to stamp it out. And tyrants have tried to wash it from the face of the earth with the very blood of those who claim it. Yet, still it stands. And there shall be in that day when every voice that has ever uttered a sound, every voice of Adam's race, shall raise in one mighty chorus to proclaim the name of Jesus for in that day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. It was not mere chance that caused the angel one night so long ago to say to a virgin maiden, his name shall be called Jesus. There is something about that name. Jesus. Jesus, there's just something about that name. Thank you. 
Today we'll start in verse number 21. You know the story. Again, you were here. Most of you were here last week. Verse number 21, this is the angel speaking to Joseph. And it says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife. Now, between verse number 24 and the end of verse number 25, there is some months that have passed. But verse 25 says, And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Y'all just say that name with me this morning. Jesus. In verse number 25, the time that Joseph, the time that Mary had been waiting on has come. In verse 25, it says that she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. I, I want to deal with that thought. He called his name Jesus. And those, for me, some of the most anxious times in my life had been those 40 weeks that I've uh, that I had to endure. Now, I realize that my wife endured it a lot differently than I did. Uh, but for some of you men, you may understand what I mean. Uh, I love my wife. Some of you may not, but uh, not my wife, but yours. But I love my wife. And so when she began her, her now I'm not being vulgar, but when her body began to change shape, I was concerned. My wife has always been about as big as that microphone. And so when she began to change, that worried me. When, when we went to the doctors and he said, now these things are going to be changing. Your body will begin to move. And, you're, and God is so amazing. He makes those women's bones be able to expand. I'm about to run over bones moving. Amen. Just because God knew. God knew what to do. For that woman, so that she could bear a child. But in those 40 weeks from conception to delivery, man, it was an anxious time for me. And I did that twice. Did that a couple of other times, but didn't come to the 40-week mark. But that was a time of anxiousness. And I can imagine during this time of Joseph uh, and Mary also, I don't want to discount Mary, uh, I understand that no doubt there was some anxiety there during those 40 weeks. There was some pain that was endured. There was, there was a mass of emotions that no doubt she and all of you women that have given birth have endured. Uh, but there's something about those 40 weeks that, that tend to make every nerve and every emotion and every, every change on edge for us and those that finally come to an end at the end of verse number 25. He knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. 
you remember this setting that we preached about last week in verse number 18, it says that the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. In other words, this is how it went down. You understand that there uh, was a love that had been blossoming uh, between Joseph and Mary, and, and there was a love that had caused Joseph one day to ask Mary to be his bride. And, and there was a love there that all of a sudden was placed on display and was was put into a, a, a place of flux when he found out that this woman was carrying a child that was not his own. And, and that love, no doubt, for a little while was put to the test. But I'm glad that this angel came and, and told him what he needed to do. And he said, fear not. This angel began to, to tell Joseph some things that would happen. And the angel says in verse number 21, after he'd already told him not to fear, he said, thou shalt call his name Jesus. And this is the reason, Brother Jody, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. There was a specific reason uh, that God gave his only begotten son a name like this. And I want to deal with this name today, and I trust that it'll be a blessing. And uh, we're going to be turning. Normally, I try to put down all of my scriptures so it's just easily, but I want us to turn. I want you to see. I want you to fill your pages in the Bible. That's why I went and got Kaylee a Bible. I didn't want her to go through her phone and, and go through the, the Bible app. I want you to fill the page this morning, and I want you to see what God has to say about some things. But I want us to notice, first of all, today, about this origin of the name. This origin of the name. And as a matter of fact, verse number 21 is the first time that we truly see the name Jesus. Now, I understand that verse number one of Matthew chapter number one has the name Jesus Christ. Verse number 18 has the name Jesus Christ. Verse number 16 has the name Jesus, who is called the Christ. But this is the first time true mention outside of Matthew's descriptive language and, and the genealogy, he begins to lay down something about this name. We understand if we turn back to, to Numbers, you don't have to turn there just quickly. Uh, numbers chapter number 13, verse number 8, it talks about someone else that has the, the Hebrew version of, of the name Jesus, and that's Joshua, in Numbers 13, verse number 8, he, he calls him Oshea, or Oshua. In verse number 16 of Numbers chapter 13, he says, these are the names of the spies which Moses sent. Uh, Moses called Oshua, or Oshea, the son of Nun, Jehoshua. And so we see Oshea, or Oshua, however you want to say it. And then we say Jehoshua in verse number 16. And so what necessarily is it about this name uh, that we see in the Old Testament? Well, Oshea means salvation. But then in Exodus chapter number 17, verse number 9, his name is not Oshea, it's not Jehoshua, but it's Joshua. And Joshua, it means Jehovah is salvation. It is essentially Jehovah and Oshea put together, and it means Jehovah is salvation. Now, we understand that Joshua is a type, if you will, a picture, if you will, of, of Christ, and so we can glean that information from his name, Samuel. We can glean that he was he had been given a name, Oshea means salvation, and he was such a, a representation of Jehovah uh, that Moses gave him the name Joshua. Joshua, Jehovah is salvation, uh, but we see that Joshua in this picture or type of Christ, he was born into poverty, he was born into slavery, if you will, that sounds a whole lot like Jesus Christ, he was born into poverty, I was going through some old messages of mine and I, I noticed, uh, I kind of uh, I went backward on, on something that I said yesterday or last Sunday. Uh, I said that it is evident because of the sacrifice that, that Joseph gave of the two turtle doves. Uh, it's evident that they did not come from, uh, from a wealth. They were probably uh, in poverty, and I still believe that. But in one of my uh, previous messages, I was focusing on the inn. Remember, there was no room, Nathan. There was no room for them in the inn. 
And uh, there had been a conversation that I was going through at the time when I wrote uh, the message that the fact that there was no room in the inn had nothing to do with wealth or the lack of wealth. The, the happening that he was born in a stable and placed in a manger had nothing to do with how much or how little money they had. I firmly believe that all of that was simply God's plan and God's design. But I do believe that, that Jesus was born into poverty. He was born into nothing. Matter of fact, later on in his life, he said the foxes have holes and the birds have airs. Uh, have nests, excuse me, uh, but the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. I firmly believe that even in his youth there was, there was a, a picture of poverty. Joshua was born into poverty. He was actually born into slavery. Not only that, but he followed the rule of Moses. If you look over, I believe it's in Ephesians chapter number two. I can't remember exactly, but it talks about how that Jesus followed the rule of the law, but by Jesus, grace entered in. You see, there's a picture here. Not only that, but Joshua led the wandering people there of Israel out of the wilderness. He led them into Canaan. He led them over to Jordan. The walls, remember the walls of Jericho? They fell right there in front of Joshua. Well, there were some other laws that fell in front of Christ in Ephesians chapter number 2, verse number 14. For he is our peace, who hath both made, had made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. So we see a little bit of likeness between Joshua, this Jehovah is salvation and the Lord. So that kind of lays the origin, if you will, down of the name Jesus. I'll go more in depth now. Number two, I want you to notice the name as it was given to Christ. If we were to look back into history, there, there's, a, there's a historical writer by the name of Josephus. And Josephus, if you've ever read any of his stuff, you, you, you see that he differs in Scripture a lot. But there's a lot of things that he says that lines up historically. And in that, you'll notice that there are there is a common name during this time, and it was the name Jesus. We don't call our name our son Jesus. I remember it made news. How many remember this a few years ago? Somebody named their baby Messiah. Anybody remember that? I, I went off the deep end. I thought, are you kidding me? And as you could imagine, it was someone that likes to name children crazy name. I'll just leave it at that. But Jesus was common. Many of the, the parents looked back at their heroes. Here was Joshua. He led the people across the Jordan. I'm going to name my son Joshua. I'm going to name him Jesus. That was, Jesus was the Greek equivalent. To Joshua. It was a common name. They named him after the he after the heroes. But but the name Jesus became uncommon when it was given to this baby. Most of the time when we hear about the name Jesus. It's usually in connection with something else. Maybe Jesus the Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus the Son of God, Jesus the Son of, uh, of Man. It's usually mentioned in connection with something else. But from the time that that baby here in verse number 25 was called Jesus, I firmly believe that, that the, the historical usage of that name began to change. There was something, even if not physically, even if not historically, there was something different about this baby that was called Jesus. Now, take your Bibles and turn with me, Luke chapter number 2. Luke chapter number 2, verse number 10, and verse number 11. Luke chapter number 2, verse number 10, verse number 11. And the angel, here, here's, some, here's some shepherds in their, in their watching sheep, and the angel said to them, fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, listen to what it says, 
a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. There was something different about this name Jesus. I understand that it is not written in the context of these verses that I just read. But he says that there will be a Savior. You remember what Joshua means? Jehovah is salvation. Do you understand that Jesus means salvation? And he says here in verse number 11 that there is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord. Uh, this name Jesus meant salvation uh, to these shepherds. If we were to look back over in Matthew chapter number 8, uh, let's see in chapter number 8 verse number 16. It says, uh, when the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Verse number 17, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness. You may say, Brother Jane, what in the world does this have to do with the name of Jesus Christ? Let's, let's look at it again. It says in verse 16 that the evil was come. Many were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. I believe that this name meant healing even to the helpless. It says by his word. I wonder what those words could have been. Uh, we see a few times where he uh, called someone's name. Where oh, well, Who was it? Uh, 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 Talitha, I believe he said at one point, and then on the cross, he, he didn't speak uh, uh, in, in language that we would understand, but he spoke Eli, or Eli, Eli, Lava Sabachthani, even in those words, it makes me wonder Miss Rachel, who was he speaking to? But regardless of who he was speaking to, the scripture gives, gives record here that with his word, he healed all that were sick. The name meant healing to the helpless. We can turn to Acts chapter number 3. Acts chapter number 3, verse number 6. I want you to fill those pages now. Then Peter said, you remember Peter, and I believe it's Peter and John, uh, they were going up to the temple, and there was a man, a man begging arms, and he said, hey, can you give me something? Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the, somebody tell me what that says. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I'm not going to read it, but you see, I believe it's in chapter number 24 of Matthew, uh, some other places as well. Uh, it says, have we not in thy name cast out devils? Have we not in thy name done many wonderful works? There's something about that name. It meant healing to the heaven. Go back to Matthew chapter 8, verse number 29. Uh, we see that this name meant destruction to the demons. Now, I got a little excited about this. I remember a story uh, and I honestly don't remember who all was involved other than Brother Buster Seaton. But Brother, Brother, Bro, excuse me, Brother Buster Seaton uh, was, uh, was I, believe, I guess you would say he was kind of studying or he was researching uh, when they would do the, the masking, I believe that's what it's called, when you play a, one of those rock uh, records backwards and how there would be words that were spoken clearly. And, and uh, I can't remember the details of the entire story, but but that thing, I, you know, I'm scared of everything. And so uh, when I when I start hearing about demons or reading about demons, I get a little edgy. And uh, this morning, it's like the Holy Spirit just walked by me and uh, kind of nudged me to look up something about this name, Ch mm, about this name Jesus and these these demons. And I begin to think about Brother Buster and begin to think about if I remember correctly. Uh, that they, Tom, do you remember the story? They they quit fooling with all that stuff, I believe, because it was so real, and they felt such a demonic spirit around them. But I begin to think about that. And I was writing some things down this morning, Matthew chapter number eight, verse number twenty, ooh, 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 ooh. verse number twenty nine. It says, and they uh, let's just read verse twenty eight. I ain't got nowhere else to be. And when he was come to the other side of the country of Gennesaret. The, the Gergesenes, uh, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fear, so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, Who is they? These were those that were possessed with devils. I believe in the heart of hearts, Brother Terry, that this was the devils themselves crying out. And they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee? Somebody tell me what it says. 
Jesus, thou son of God. Brother Jim, they didn't, they didn't wonder who this cat was. They didn't think he was some, some preacher. They didn't think that he was just someone passing by their way. But rather they came to him and they begged him by name. Look at it again. It says they cried out saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God? Let's look a little bit further. Mark chapter number 1, verse number 34. Look at what he says. Uh, here in verse number 34. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils. Listen to this. And suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. And we're talking about the name of Jesus. And, and if you're taking notes, we're talking about how the name meant destruction to demons. He said there in Matthew chapter number 29 that those demons came and called him by name and said, please don't torment us. Here in verse number 34, Mark chapter number 1, he cast out these devils, but then he suffered. He allowed them not to speak because they knew who he was. They knew his name. Luke chapter number 4. Luke chapter number 4, verse number 41. Here we are again. And the devils also came out of many crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew he was Christ. This morning, you better know, I said you better know that if the Holy Spirit is living in you, those devils will understand what power that we have. Not only comes from Christ. Now, if you know somebody that's possessed with devil, don't call me. You, you can figure that out on your own. I ain't, I ain't stuck getting caught up in all that. But what I do know is that that spirit that is in you will repel that spirit that is in me. These, these demons knew the name of Christ. A lot of times when we think about de the devil, we think about one devil that sinned against God, that was cast down into hell. But understand that there were multitudes of angels that sided with the devil and was cast into hell. And these angels, these now we call them demons, they are, the Bible says that the devil is that's a roaring light, lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. Those devils knew his name. There's something about this name. Look with me one more in Luke chapter number 8, verse number 28. <clears throat> this is the same story that we read over there in Matthew chapter number 8. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus? Thou Son of God, Most High, I beseech thee, torment me not. <clears throat> this was not just some young man that had the name Jesus. It was not a family name that was passed on to him. He was not named Jesus after the hero of Joseph and Mary. He was named Jesus the Savior of the world. He was, I said, he was named Jesus, the Savior of the world. It was mandated by God because the devils knew who he was. They called him by name and said, do not torment him. Matthew chapter number 11. Let's, let's look here. The name meant life to the lepers. Matthew chapter number 11, verse number 4 and verse number 5. It says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show unto John again those things which you do hear and see. Now, i got to stop real quick and say this. You understand that John the Baptist is who we're talking about here. John the Baptist was the cousin of Jesus Christ. But not only was he the cousin of Jesus Christ, but, but even at his birth, he was, uh, Zacharias was told that he's going he's gonna to live out in the wilderness. If you look there, and I believe it's John, I don't know kind of exactly where it's at, but, but it tells that John was on the wilderness until his time came. And he, he came, and what did he do? He preached repentance. He, he preached about a coming lamb. He pointed at Jesus and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. 
And now we find here in Matthew chapter number 11 that he is asking Jesus, art thou the Christ or should we look for another? Verse number four, go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. But listen to this. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk and the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear and the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. How do you reckon? How do you reckon these blind were made to see? And these lepers were made to be cleansed. And these that were crippled were able to walk. And, and the dead that were able to be raised. Don't you think that it was the breath of Christ that raised them? I believe it was Jesus that, that went by the, 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 the burial uh, of bed of the widow of Nain. And I, and I may be wrong. Don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure he didn't even say a word. He just touched the bed and the boy got up. You see, there's something about this Jesus. He was unlike all of the others. There's something special about him. That name meant life to the lepers. In this same scripture, you can see that it meant resurrection for the dead. He said the dead are raised up. I love this. Every single one of us. I know some of us may have more money than others, but listen to what it says, Brother Jody. It puts us all in the same place. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. That ought to make us excited. Then, lastly, some of y'all shut me down, so I'm just going to give you this. I'm going to go to the house. Let the Holy Ghost deal with y'all. Acts chapter number 4, verse number 12. We're talking about this name, Jesus. This name brings salvation. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Over there in John chapter number 3, Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, and he said, Marvel not that you must be born again. You must be born again. How can you be born again? By the name of Jesus, neither is there salvation. There's not a person in this world that has ever came to James Eugene Burke and received salvation from their sin. And never will there be. Oh, but if, some, if someone ever comes and claims the name of Jesus Christ, you can mark it down that they will be saved. Amen. The importance of the name of Jesus now or today. It's with the name of Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus. It's by the name of Jesus that we have hope for tomorrow. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. I, I'm, I'm partial to this for a few reasons. One, because it proves that, uh, that it's not going to be anyone else that comes. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. He says, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. We live in a time of uncomfortable and perilous times. And we need to rehearse the fact that Jesus is coming again. He's not going to send Peter. He's not going to send Paul. He's not going to send some saint of God of this outstripped us by the grave. But the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout to receive us unto himself. There's something
nothing about this thing named Jesus. I could have been named Jesus for all intents and purposes. You could have been named Jesus, but we wouldn't have been that Jesus. He's coming again. Not only that, but over in the book of Philippians chapter number 2. Philippians chapter number 2, verse number 5. It says, let this mind, let this way of, let this opinion be in you. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who? Being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found fashioned as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God, somebody going to have to help me, hath exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and, and the glory of the Father this morning and we got folks that hate President Trump. How they curse his name. Some praise his name. Some say that he's the savior of the world. Some he says that he's the savior of America or the economy. And I don't know about all that. I don't know about uh, uh, the other fella Biden. I don't know what he has to offer. I don't know what he's going to do and damn in this world. But what I do know is that my eternal trust is not in President Trump, nor is it in Biden, nor anyone else, but it's in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I can guarantee it today. Those folks that may be trying their best to discredit one person's name over another, they can mark it down that when this thing is over, every knee will bow and they will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. There will be no protest. There will be no signs saying, I don't believe it. But they will drop their signs. They will drop their eyes. They will drop to their knees and they will confess that Jesus, the one that I've denied, a Jesus, the one that I've cursed. A Jesus, the one that I've tried to stamp out of memory. Jesus is the Christ and the Lord over all. There is a judgment associated with this name. Then today, just in case you need a little bit of help. I hope it's been a blessing, but if not, for the next couple minutes, I want to try to be a blessing. Hebrews chapter number four, verse number 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us, let us hold fast the profession, or he says our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Now that verse can confuse a whole lot of people just because of the way that it's laid out. I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to harm the scripture, but I want you to know what verse number fifteen says. It says we do have a high priest, and he can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He says, and so much. He was in all points tempted like as we are. He knows what you're dealing with. He knows the, the, the heartache of death. I've been studying about Joseph. You know, we preached about Joseph. And we don't see the name of Joseph, at Joseph after Jesus is 12 years old. You don't see Joseph walking around. You, you, you don't see him, Brother Jody. It makes me wonder if Joseph might have passed away somewhere between Jesus being 12 years old and Jesus being 30 years old. We don't see any record. I believe he knows what loss is. I believe he knows what, what, now I want to be careful right here because the Bible says he was without spot, without blemish. And you know what happens. If you pick up a saw and you work with wood, you're going to get a splinter, you're going to get a cut, 
Some you're gonna hit the wrong nail one time with a hammer, so you're gonna have bruises. And, and I, I want to be very careful because I mean the Bible's very clear that he was without blemish and without spot. Y'all follow me, right? But I just wonder if he might have known pain. It says he was tempted in all points like as we are. Now let's let's go away from this physical pain. We can see him in the garden. He's in anguish. We can see him multiple times in the garden. And he's in anguish. I believe that was a physical pain. A loss. Of turmoil. I believe that no doubt at his crucifixion there was physical pain. There was emotional pain. There was spiritual pain. He took upon himself the sin of the world. He was tempted in all points like as we are. I love this. Yet without sin. Verse 16 though. It says therefore. Let us therefore. Let us because of all of these things that we've heard. Let us because of all of the things that have been nailed down as, as truth from God. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. That we may what? Obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Wednesday night, when, this past Wednesday night, there are some folks that were hurting. Some prayed in their seats. Some prayed at the altar. But there were some folks hurting. There were some folks worried. Some folks burdened. Some folks uh, that maybe physically hurting. You want to know why they turned around the seats? You want to know why they came down to an altar? You want to know, it wasn't because, it wasn't because that, that's the proper thing to do. It's because that they have a promise that the Holy Spirit holds real close to the heart. Uh, that if you need help, you can go bold. I'm about to run. You can go boldly to the throne of grace. You don't have to be timid when going to God. Uh, you don't have to be shy when going to God. You don't have to creep around the corner and say, Jesus, it's me again. God, it's me again. But you can come boldly into the throne of God and you can find grace to help in a time of need. I'm glad this morning that if you need help, you can get it today and you can get it by Jesus Christ. Amen. The importance of the name of Jesus today is that uh, he will return for his people. It is that you can get help there in Hebrews chapter 4. It is that there is judgment. We need to be careful. I believe that Christians can judge. There's a lot of people that get all tore up about this. Judge not that you be not judged and all this kind of stuff. I believe we can we can kind of tell if someone's really saved or not by just one basic test, whether or not they love the brethren. If they love the brethren, the Bible says they're, they're one of his. But, but, we can, we can get into a, we can get into trouble when we begin to judge. Yes, the Bible says judge not, each of you not But the Bible gives us that fruit of the Spirit. If someone's saved, you'll, you'll have these nine things. <clears throat> you'll love one another. You'll have peace, joy, all of those things you'll have. But if we get so, so caught up on judging one another to ourselves, instead of giving, then I'm talking about this name of Jesus brings judgment. Instead of living in front of them, and trying to be a witness for them. They may be wrong. They may be wrong. But that doesn't mean we have to be. So you see someone that needs, needs judgment. You see someone that needs to be corrected. Then we need to remember even of ourselves. That every knee should bow. And every tongue shall confess. We need to understand that. But we need to. Galatians says if you see a brother that has stumbled. That has fallen. He said restore such a one. mentioned this a few weeks ago how many of us up to now have really truly prayed for the return of Christ 
I, I honestly believe it's something we can look forward to. I'm telling you, this, this past Thursday, we, we loaded up and we got in the car, I think, at 9.07. And I was mad because we were supposed to be gone by 9. Seven minutes. Late. Seven minutes. Now, I didn't tell my wife, so y'all don't tell her either. But I was upset that we weren't on the road at 9 o'clock. You want to know why, Brother Jim? Because I've been looking forward to going over there. I was looking forward to Wednesday night because I knew we wanted to pray over it. And when people gather around and pray, man, it just it just put another joy in my heart. Man, I can't, you know, I can't wait. Let's just leave tonight. Let's go home. We got 40 left people at the house. Let's go home. The house ain't gonna burn down. I promise. Let's go. Thursday morning, got up, got about my business. Done what we needed to do. Finally got on the road. And it, it's it's somewhere between five and seventy-two hours to get over there from here. I I, I lost track. Man, that, that drive was ahead of us. But in my heart, my heart, Miss Denise, I was joyous because I was looking forward to it. Here in a couple days, next Sunday, we're gonna leave church and we're gonna go up to Tennessee going to be there for Christmas. And I can remember as a boy, especially as a boy, I look forward to Christmas all year long. Took down the Christmas tree the day after Christmas, started looking forward to Christmas that day. Waiting for it. 364 days until Christmas. I was ready. As I've gotten older, that, that readiness is not so much there. Just because of being an adult, you know, all the things that comes along with it. But what I do, Brother David, and I don't know if you do this when you go on vacation, when you go hunting, you make preparations for that trip. Make sure your tires are good, make sure your oil's good, make sure you got fuel, make sure you're packed, make sure your guns are where they need to be, you got ammunition, and all this kind of you go on a trip, you make sure everything's in line. What kind of preparations are we making for that eternal trip one day? What kind of preparations are I look forward to the to the trips that I make? And Miss Hannah, when I make one of these trips, I get excited about it. And I'm waiting for it. A few years ago when I went on a cruise, I know your mama's been on a cruise. You've been on a cruise? Cruise is wonderful. Praise, praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, when I went on that first cruise, I, I talked to every person at the Royal Caribbean. Because <laughs> I called one day, I'm like, hey, I just want to make sure I'm doing this right. Yes, sir, you're doing fine. Next to, hello, James, how are you? Good to talk to you again. Yes, you can bring your... Yeah. Why? Because there was an anticipation. Are we truly anticipating when a man named Jesus comes to get us? It might do us good to get excited about the fact that we're going on a trip one day. And we're going on a trip with the very Son of God, the one that came and, and bled and died for you and I. It might do us good to get in the mindset that, hey, soon and very soon, we're going to meet the King. It might do us good to get in the mindset that, hey, I'm going to see my Savior. Amen. That's probably the weirdest Christmas message I've ever preached. It's my heart to see. There's something about that man. That angel told Mary and that angel told Joseph, cover both bases, Miss Tanya. You're going to call his name Jesus. And he was born, and the Bible says that Joseph, he called his name Jesus. Let's stand. Dear Father, Lord, we love you. And God, we're thankful. We're thankful, Lord, that you sent us your son. Now, God, we ask you, if you will, to go with us today. I pray that you'd bless our church. God, I miss, Lord, I miss Sunday night service. I miss Sunday school. God, there's so many people that used to come that are 
Lord, they're playing it safe. And I understand that, Lord, but I just miss them. God, I pray that you would take this COVID away from us. I pray that you'd get it as far away as possible. Lord, those that are dealing with this right now, that dealing, they're in the hospital. Please, Brother David told us Friday that all the hospital beds for COVID patients are, are filled. There's no room for anyone else in those surrounding areas. Oh, God, I pray that you'd have mercy on them. God, I pray that you'd, you'd ward off this virus from all of your people. Not just here, but everywhere. Every country, God, get rid of. God, I pray that you'd help us. Lord, if there's somebody here today that's hurting, God, I pray you'll give them what they need. If there's somebody discouraged, God, I ask you to encourage them. If there's somebody scared, Father, I pray you'd comfort them today. God, if they got questions, Lord, I pray that you'd be their knowledge, be their wisdom. God, we pray that you'd let us remember Jesus this week. Let us remember Jesus. Oh, let us say his name. God, I ask you that you would do a work in our heart. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.